Welcome to United Lutheran Church of Proctor. We come together today to hear the Word of God as it is provided by the ELCA's research called Worship in the Home, found at blogs.elca.org slash worship. Thank you to all the readers in order of appearance. Dennis Palm, Janice Anderson, Kirlyn Johnson, Audrey Berglund, Emily Lindbergh Livingston, Dan Sarla. Bolded areas, areas can be read by all. Thank you to Pastor Judy Anderson Bauer and musician Dennis Palm, as each of them will be sharing their faith through word and music respectively. Now we'll have the announcements. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, one of the prayers I'd like you to keep um, in your heart this week um, Karen and John Nolan's nephew, Jerry Borg, has died of cancer. And so uh, they've asked, and, and I think we, we really need to be keeping them in, in our prayers as they suffer the death of, of that young man. Um, also, please remember that we will be celebrating Holy Communion today. So would you please have bread and wine or juice and crackers available when we reach that part of the service? And remember that the work of the church continues and, and we are always in need of your offerings. So please remember to send those in by mail or to contribute online. Thank you. Let's begin worship today. And you're muted. Oh, I was supposed to add that. Would you please remember to mute yourself when you are not speaking and to remember to unmute yourself when you are. Thank you. Okay. I don't know where I am here. Dennis, you begin with the prayer of the day. Okay. God of love. God of love, giver of life. You know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and the Lord. Amen. The first reading, Ezekiel 18, 1 through 4 and 25 through 32. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten, have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parents as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel. Is my way unfair? It is not your ways that are, is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit in inequity, they shall die for it. For the inequity that they have committed, shall, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions they have committed. They shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? It is not your way, is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent, turn from all your transgressions, otherwise iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why? Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn, then, and live. Word of God, word of life, 
Thanks be to God. Psalm 25, 1 through 9. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me, let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who took let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your path. Lead me in your truth and teach me for you, teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, and you I have trusted all the day long. Remember me, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in the justice and teach the lowly your way. The second reading is Philippians chapter 2. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ Jesus, who, although being in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but relinquished it all, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for God's good pleasure. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, then why did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and he said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the dominion of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Though the Ten Commandments say that punishment for the iniquity of parents will go on to the third and fourth generation, the prophet Ezekiel says otherwise. We shall be punished for only our own sins. Then the prophet counsels us to get a new heart. This prophetic word is still very hard. Our own sins are way enough for serious punishment. Like the sons in the parable, we are often the ones who boldly say yes to the will of God and then do nothing. And how shall we get a new heart? But the gospel according to Matthew has begun to turn toward the story of the cross. And in this Sunday's narrative, Jesus stands in the temple, mysterious in his authority, warning the world's authorities and showing mercy to serious outsiders and sinners. Paul shows us where that mystery goes through Christ's death and resurrection. God is at work in us for a new heart we are together given the mind of Christ. There is indeed much consolation, compassion, and sharing of the Spirit in this word. Starting again in humility, we may look to the needs of others in a profoundly needy world. Friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Look not, let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. We're gonna take a little break this week from the puzzling and problematic parables of Matthew's gospel. So yes, you can take a sigh of relief because today we have one of the truly great readings in the entire Bible. The second reading for today from Paul's letter to the Church of Philippi. The text from this letter, most of it is probably not original to Paul, but instead he is quoting one of the earliest Christian hymns that we have. And in its beauty, it tells us how we are followers of Christ. During these difficult days, when as a country we have suffered over 200,000 deaths of our fellow citizens in only six months, more than the last five wars combined, it's a good time a good time for us to grieve those losses and to remember, remember what we are called to be in these dark days. Look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. I know there's a deep need among all people of faith to be together in our own comfortable worship spaces. I had a, a Zoom meeting with the other Duluth pastors this past week. One of my colleagues told of a woman who said to him that regardless of instructions, whenever they were gonna start up in-person worship, she was gonna hug every single person that came. He told her no, she wasn't gonna be able to do that. She said, I don't care, I wanna hug everybody because I need to hug everybody. And you know, I get it. Our daughter and her husband stopped by our house a month ago and we visited 
with masks on in the backyard, six feet apart. And it broke my heart to have to send them on their way without hugging them. I yearn to hold my children in my arms. Of course, of course, we all want to be able to do that. Human beings are meant to be in community. We're meant to touch each other, to hug each other, to cherish one another. We are all a little skin hungry, desperately wanting to hug and to shake hands and to hold each other, especially for those who live alone. We all want life to get back to normal. Look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. So we need to take a moment, breathe, and think. Not just what we want, what would fill us, but what's in the interest of our neighbors. Friends in Christ, this is a time of sacrifice. This is a time about doing the really hard thing for the sake of others. It's about denying ourselves, our wishes, our needs. It's about doing the difficult work of, prevent, pre, of preserving our vulnerable members, like wearing a mask when you're in public. You know, I'm sure you do, that the masks we wear, the surgical masks or the cloth masks, are not about protecting ourselves. That's what the more robust N95 masks do. What the surgical and cloth masks that we wear do is risk the infection we may be carrying and risk and not be spreading it to others. So I wear a mask for you and you wear a mask for me. That's one way during these times that we are looking to the interests of others. It's a way we care for our neighbor. We wear a mask. And here's the really, really dark reality. COVID cases have been rising in St. Louis County since the end of May, one week of downturn in mid-August. And this past week, we hit a new high of 247 cases. The risk assessment tool that I have been using, which was developed by Georgia Tech, says that for this week, in a group of only 25, the chances that one person in that group in St. Louis County will have COVID is 39%. If you have a group of 50, the risk jumps up to 63%. And in a group of 100, it's 86%. None of us would say those are good risks. Those aren't good odds. We also know that COVID-19 is not as serious for people under 65, but for those over 65, the mortality rate is 20%. So that means that people over 65 who get COVID, one out of five will die. And the more health risks that person has, the worse the outcome. Our SMART team met about a week ago, a little over a week ago, and one of the members heard from a friend who is an intensive care nurse at Essentia St. Mary's. And she said, please tell everybody you know, stay home. Wear a mask if you have to go out, wash your hands. She said, this is real, this is serious. There are people here in the ICU, there are people here on ventilators, there are people here dying. Look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Our Lord Jesus Christ did not hang on to his advantages. He didn't hang on to his godness 
Instead, he humbled himself. He became a human being. He took on a human body. And he knows what human weakness is. He knows our need to hug and to touch. He knows how easily human bodies get sick and die. When we put on the mind of Christ, we put our own interests, our own needs second, and we put the welfare of our neighbors first. That's what it means when we love our neighbors as we love ourselves. That commandment which is second only to loving God with all our heart and all our mind and all our strength. We love God when we love our neighbor. We live as disciples of Christ when we put the welfare of our neighbors above our own needs and wants. Friends in Christ, this is probably the most challenging time I've ever lived through. And it's made all the more difficult because we all are needing to decide for ourselves how to behave with very little guidance from our institutions. In all the decisions that you have to make about how to behave, remember to consider the care of your neighbor, the preservation of your neighbor's life and health above your own needs and wants. We can do this. We will get through these dark times. We will once again be able to gather in our sanctuaries to sing our hearts out to pray, to receive communion, to have coffee with our friends, to hug those we love. It will happen. But we have some tough months ahead. And we will need to gather our strength, gather our endurance from new places and in new ways. Friends in Christ, we can do this. We are the disciples of Jesus. We can do this. With God's help, we can do this. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Let each of you look, not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Amen. Dennis, do you have some music for us today? You're on mute. Dennis, you're on mute. I'm going to start it over again. Okay. Can you hear now? Like we can hear you, Dennis, but we can't hear any music. Well, it's playing on my thing. Um, all I can say is I put it on Facebook already, so it works on there. I don't know what's going on here. It's playing on my computer pretty well, so. No, none of us can hear it, I think, can we? No, no. Okay. Well, I'll put it on the website then. Um, well, that's too bad. Yeah, I know, I spent a lot of time doing it. Um, I don't know why it doesn't work because I haven't changed my settings other than um, Maybe you and Chris can work together and, and, and see what you can do this week. We'll move on then with the prayers. Okay. okay. I'll see what I can do. Emily?
Can you hear me? I can now, yes, thank you. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need, responding to each petition with the words, hear our laments and receive our prayers. Throughout the globe is the church. Many assemblies are postponed by the virus. Our songs quieted, our leaders searching for new ways forward. That you will continue to inspire all the baptized with the mind of Christ. We pray to you, faithful God. Hear our laments and receive our prayers. Around us, nature is strained. Polar ice is melting, excessive rains ravage the lands, fires consume forests, fields, and homes, and animals are deprived of habitats. That you will preserve and protect the earth, we pray to you, mighty God. Hear our laments and receive our prayers. Around us is a needy world. Governments allow injustice, violence threatens stability, people experience prejudice, reforms are thwarted, workers are unemployed, medical facilities are strained, children are abused. That you will save the people in all the nations of the world, we pray to you, compassionate God hear our laments, and receive our prayers. In our nation's courts, we see justice delayed and justice derailed, denied. Yet, we thank you for the life of Ruth Bader Ginsburg and for her passion for equality under the law. That you will uphold honest judges and insightful judges throughout the criminal justice system, and that you will assist our nation in the task of filling the Supreme Court. We pray to you, righteous God. Hear our laments and receive our prayers. Around us are the sick. There is starvation. The virus continues. Many persons receive no medical attention. Our neighbors and dear ones see it, are it, are ill. That you will bless all ministers of care and will relieve the suffering of those who are ill in body, mind, and spirit. We pray to you, merciful God. Hear our laments and receive our prayers. Nearby, our needs of which we are unaware. That you will send your holy angels to uphold all who face personal troubles, we pray to you, benevolent God. Hear our laments and receive our prayers. Inside many hearts, there is both joy and sorrow. We pray now for ourselves. that you will give us new hearts and new spirit. We pray to you, loving God. Hear our laments and receive our prayers. Before us lived countless of the fear faithful, the famous and the forgotten, our relatives and strangers. We lament their deaths and we praise their witness that we may confess Jesus Christ our, as Lord through our life and at our death. We pray to you, eternal God, hear our laments and receive our prayers. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy. Through Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen.
At this time, would you make sure you have your bread and wine or your juice and crackers available for the celebration of Holy Communion? Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends in Christ, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood and blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. God's peace is with you always. Amen. I can try to do that video again. I'll try it. Oh, okay. That's all right. Oh, wait. Let me, let me do the prayers and then you can do Okay, that. I'll try it. Yeah, I don't know. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, slow to anger, rich in love, we bless your name and give you thanks. In our need, you make haste to help us. You plant us beside streams of your wisdom. Teach us in pastures greening with truth and guide us on the path of your promise. By your spirit, awaken our faith that feasting on your word, we may love you more fully and serve our neighbor more faithfully. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Mother and God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Go ahead and give it a try, Dennis, and see. I'll give her a try. Great. We're getting little bits of it, Dennis, but not much. Okay. No, I don't think so, Dennis. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right, we'll try to work on that with Chris. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.